from you as, you know, at that time when, you know, again, you, you had an active business, you're an entrepreneur and we, we understand, you know, again, struggling versus succeeding is almost the same thing. So you're putting a yeah. lot of time and energy and effort into work. Yes. How much time do you think that you were spending allowing, you know, Vitalik to listen to what you were doing or talking to him about what you did in, in a day-to-day? Quite a bit, quite operation? a bit, you know, like that's all in all, that's also my philosophy for a successful business. I believe that uh, in the modern world, successful businesses like is different, very different from the old hierarchical structures, which suppose that here's the top commander that knows the best, knows you know the best way to move forward, and then here's the hierarchy of his troops, and he says what to do, and they just implement his decisions, right? That that's kind of the old model, right? And that model is totally messed up. And again, as a quick comment on current events. Basically, what we have in Russia, we have a paranoid, uh, you know, uh, maniac Putin. He kind of has his own view of the world, and then kind of that's now implemented by his supporters and his army. That's kind of pretty crazy. And I think in a successful enterprise, it's very different. It's like successful enterprises where the whole organization is very sensitive to what is going on. And actually, I'm a huge believer in the non-hierarchical or ways to organize a business. And that's kind of how I ended up restructuring my my, my uh, last business that I sold. Uh, and uh, one aspect of this is I'm a huge believer in transparency. So in the, all of, in the businesses that I've built, so uh, last uh, few of them at least, is that we always had full transparency with all of our employees. How are we doing financially? What is going on with sales? What is going on with this and that? Kind of what kind of customer support issues we have and whatnot. Uh, so actually every month uh, we would, uh, the whole team would together collaborate and create a presentation, uh, state of the business for the current month with all the KPIs and all the important things and we were presented to everybody in the business. So everybody in the business had uh, a view into what's happening with the business. And actually then I would take that presentation from time to time, and I would actually discuss things with Vitalik. Hey, Vitalik, check it out. This is kind of what we're doing, and here are the KPIs, here are some ways. And it was really fascinating because obviously he had a bright mind, and we had really cool discussions about uh, things, even though he obviously didn't have specific insights into a particular customer base or things like sales and marketing, but he, also, he always had really interesting questions. Uh, what was also fascinating, like, you know, jumping ahead a little bit for me to kind of looking back at that, um, he, um, uh, growing up in Canada, in Canada, if you will, uh, it's much more socialist, if you will, than the U.S., right? Uh, and uh, mm, so there was a lot of, uh, if you will, brainwashing in the schools about the unions and this and that and kind of more socialized approach to things, right? And uh, that was his bias and my bias as kind of growing up in the Soviet Union and uh, Mm, having seen their ultimate, uh, what, what it becomes when the state becomes the ultimate expression of those socialist ideas, it becomes just a rigid, totally uh, ineffective, uh, rigid structure that doesn't quite work. So it was interesting that the kind of discussions we had, and when we, and when he ended up leading Ethereum and building Ethereum, it was really f- fascinating for me that uh, the way Ethereum is structured and uh, the whole organization is a, is, a, is a very different beast from a typical um, private enterprise, right? And most people totally, it's hard for people to understand, especially for entrepreneurs, because again, we want things to happen. We want things to be effective. We want things to happen fast and stuff like that. But Ethereum as such, it's a, it's a very different uh, type of organization. It's built much more on open source principles. It's a very mushy, very loosely connected However, very resilient and very creative uh, organization. You know, instead of like a, a mechanical being that's kind of efficient at doing some stuff, it's more like uh, something alive, something that emerges from so many people and there is so much inefficiency and there is so much uh, redundancy, so much other stuff. But also now over the years, kind of watching the Ethereum community grow and develop and build what they're building, I am really... Um, fascinated by uh, that uh, analogy with like, you know, this is much more of a, a life system that is, uh, uh, that is achieving so much and building their new infrastructure for the world versus many businesses that end up 
being very efficient and but also very rigid and going in directions like you know maximizing profit but then you know really messing up the environment messing up lives of the employees and so many other aspects right so this was really interesting for me to kind of in my interaction with Vitalik kind of see that difference in approaches and learn from that